The following video includes testimony of attempted murder, child molestation, rape, abuse, fraud, grand theft, judicial corruption, conspiracy to induce suicide, and several additional disturbing allegations that need to be enforced on this monster known as David Rucky, along with local judges who have been protecting him. How do we arrest a child molester and rapist when he is protected by a local judge? Where does our justice system start and stop? How do we stop this disturbing corruption? In Lakeville, Minnesota, there is a monster currently on the loose. He has already raped and molested three young girls, two of which were his own daughters. This person and his accomplices need to be held accountable for their crimes and locked up in prison before any more atrocities to other children are allowed to happen. I'm Sandra Sue Grazzini Rucky. I go by Sam. Um, I'm here to tell the truth. This is about putting a monster and monsters that have committed crimes against my children and me putting them away and holding them accountable for what's been done. This is solely about justice. I have five children, Nico, Sammy, Gianna, Nia, and Gino. They range from 21 to 15 at this time. You have to know that my children are in danger from this monster and he needs to be put behind bars. The crimes that have been committed against my children and myself have got to stop. We've got to stop it now. I'm simply here for justice. I'm asking somebody to protect them, my children, and protect me, and stop this before it's too late. I mean, our mom was always our protector, but now there's no one there to protect us. The abuse by David Rucky has been unlimited and includes several forms of sexual, physical, mental, child, animal, and emotional tactics. The violently gross and graphic details of the child molestation, rape, and incest have been left out of this video intentionally and can be discussed in person with the proper individuals. I lost three children um, while I was pregnant from abuse. I miscarried them from abuse. On my last child, uh, Gino, um, David had found out that he wasn't going to be so-called perfect. The doctors thought that maybe he might have Down syndrome. Um, there might be something wrong with him. Um, prior to me giving birth to Gino, my ex-husband beat me so bad that um, I went into preterm labor and I gave birth to Gino. He still suffers from long time um, problems because of that. David Rucky has a 20 year history of abusive behavior. Um, he did not only did abuse against me and the children, he also sexually abused um, while we were married. One of his girlfriends while we were married's daughter. She was 15 years old and she happened to be a friend of my daughter. Um, the woman he was dating while we were married was Gina Farrell and her daughter was Shay Reynolds. She was 15 years old. She played on the same hockey team as my daughter. I didn't know to the level that David was doing the abuse with my children. I knew, and I did know, that he was uh, physically abusing them. He was emotionally abusing them and verbally abusing them. I did not know about the sexual abuse until after I had gotten divorced. I got bits and pieces of what had been going on. He had used the same type with me that I will kill your mother and I will kill you if your mother ever finds out or anybody finds out what you've been doing and what he had been doing to them. It took me till 45 till I was able to stand up to my ex-husband David Rucky. My children would be here today with me, sitting next to me if they weren't afraid. So think about that. At 45 I was petrified to leave till it gave me enough courage. They are simply 18, 19, and 22, 21 and they would be here if they weren't so afraid of him. They need protection, and that's what this is all about, is my children need protection, even as adults. I'm just really scared it's gonna end really badly. Okay, after the divorce, I had found out that uh, David had been sexually abusing um, my two oldest daughters, Gianna and Samantha. Um, inappropriate touching, don't make me get into this. Divorce happened, it was our way to get away from him. Yeah. And that's what we really wanted. David has already proved to be a very violent and explosive man. He is not only a pedophile, he's not only done incest, we've, we've showed repeatedly his abuse, but he's also gone after other children. We, we need to put him in jail. That is where he needs to be to stop this. My plea is that justice is taken care of and that they do something with this monster so he does not hurt another child. He's already been willing to hurt his own children and a friend of one of my daughters. We need to stop so he does not hurt another child or another adult or anybody else. There was over 10 HROs, which are harassment restraining orders and orders for protection filed against 
my ex-husband, David Ruckey. The court system in Dakota County has dismissed or overruled everyone. Where and how do you find justice with a corrupt judge? These crimes need to be stopped and David Ruckey needs to go to jail. The issues of orders that Judge Knutson issued would make it very clear that he made it so that there was no way that I was to survive. I believe that they expected me to either kill myself or to just die off on the streets alone and that I wouldn't be here today speaking out. David made it very clear that he wanted me homeless, childless, penniless, jobless, in jail, and dead. When my attorney would speak up and say that that was a terroristic threat in court, Judge Knutson would say he's simply an angry man and it's all because of her and she caused it. David, last time we were in court, stated, I have made her homeless, childless, penniless, jobless. I have put her in jail. Therefore, I, all I have left to do is have her gone. This county has basically destroyed um, the lives of many, many people, not only my children and myself, but anybody who has tried to help me. Um, there's been many people that the county and the state has gone after, and that goes as far as um, Michelle McDonald, who is my family court attorney, Michael Redeen, uh, Jack Ald, um, numerous people they have sought out to destroy for simply trying to help me and to try to expose what the county's been doing. We are simply asking for justice. It is completely illegal. We have proved it. Everything that we are telling you today can be backed up with either voice recordings, audio recordings, and court documents and other documents. It's extreme because, first of all, it's in family court and not child protection, but it's happening all over to families all over. They're losing their liberties in this manner, their liberties to be with their children. When Sandra doesn't give up, the judge produces orders so outrageous that it looks and sounds like a conspiracy to induce suicide. On September 7, 2012, Judge Knutson ordered Sandra Grazzini Rucky out of her home, away from her kids that very day. He appointed a different therapist to deprogram the kids. Another question is, why would a judge, even in the family court, even into the criminal court, why would one woman who's never committed any crime be issued over 4,000 court orders and be ordered to follow them? Why would a judge completely strip you of everything for the rest of your life? Not only am I never allowed to contact my children, I'm not allowed to contact my children's children, my own family members, my relatives, my co-workers. Why would a judge go to this extreme if not to cover up for something he had done? When he had first done this, it was extreme enough. But then I think when he got farther and farther, he got out of control, trying harder and harder to cover things up. When they had thrown me out of the house, my children all ran for fear of their safety from their aunt, Tammy Love, from their grandparents, Fred and Vicki Ruckey, and from their father, most of all, David Ruckey. The kids were brought in, Judge David Knutson, prior to my ex-husband getting custody. Um, they had taken the kids from me because they said they needed to break the children. And his attorney kept saying, you need to break the mother-child bond. The bond with the children, with the mother, is too strong. You need to break it. So they went, brought the kids into chambers to talk to Judge David Knutson. and the kids pleaded. They brought him in one by one and the little ones together and they pleaded with the judge, please do not make us go to him. Please let us live with their mother. And they went on and on. They talked about abuse. They talked about everything. Judge Knutson sealed the chambers. I was there. He sealed the chambers, um, uh, all their testimony, and to this day has refused to let it out. The girls told the judge what they want. The judge told me that kids have no choice and I have no choice. On, the, on April 19th of 2013, my two children, uh, Samantha and Gianna Rocky, ran away. They got free. They had gone to the police station by my sister had taken them there under false pretenses. When they got to the police station, they um, were told that this was the plan all along. We are bringing you back to your father and you will remain with him and you will never see your mother again. She's not, she, we will never allow her to have contact with you. When they brought her, the children back to the home, they were escorted by police. The kids got into the home. They took off, and they went running immediately for their safety. Um, they were out on the streets. They contacted me. I didn't know what to do. I was using a friend's car. I had no place to stay myself. I had no money. And they said they were running again with or without my help. So when I received the phone call, Dale Nathan had been with me. Dale Nathan, I didn't know what to do, so I got him in the car thinking I've got a witness. You know, you can see what's going on. We went to find my children. We found them out on the highway, running down the highway. 
Um, it was not snowing as, as 2021, to believe this was in April, but the kids were running with no shoes um, down the hallway. I picked him up, uh, Dale was in the car. We drove to a subway. Dale said he wanted to interview the children and wanted me to leave the car while he spoke to the children. I did as he requested, he spoke to the children. He then, I, when I got back into the car, he said, oh my God, Sam, this is worse than I ever thought it was. He said, we cannot take these children back to the police. They've been everywhere. We've got to protect them. The Rucky girls say they want to be heard. They met with us at a hotel just days after they took off. We don't know who brought them here. Dakota County Judge David Knutson won't let them live with their mom, and they refuse to see their dad. He was abusive. Really? In he what way? Emotionally, verbally. This mother's love is unconditional and it clearly took precedence over the outrageous court orders in an effort to help safeguard her two daughters. The former attorney that helped her and a star witness for the abuse of the children suddenly and mysteriously dies after a false raid at a senior citizen home. Things are heating up now and the once simple divorce has manifested into a major problem for the judge and his course of actions. A Star and Tribune reporter who is um, very well known for covering up family court issues. Anyways, he contacted Dale Nathan. Dale Nathan thought that Brandon Stahl was actually going to help him. Well, he didn't. Dale Nathan um, talked to Brandon Stahl, explained to him all about the abuse of David, that he had spoken to the children, um, that what had been going on, what David Ruckey had been doing to the kids, and that he was there that day, and why he had instructed me not to return the kids. But the fact, most of all, is that I had dropped off the kids at a safe house to give them protection from the, this monster. Within days, Lakeville police um, busted in. Let's keep in mind that Dale at that time, I believe was 86 years old. They had um, stormed into Dale's uh, senior citizen home, into his little apartment in the senior zone, and charged him with drug trafficking. And that's what their reasoning was for storming into his place. They confiscated everything in his um, little senior citizen home. They took everything, um, completely emptied them out. Dale ended up in the hospital. Now Dale had already talked to the police, talking to the, um, just the reporter. Now the police had busted in and stole all his records, everything he had. Dale was ill, had gone to the hospital. Tw this is right after he had talked to 2020. Myster Dale had a very mysterious death. He was admitted when he requested not to be admitted. They kept him there against his will. And then the day after the 2020 um, showing, he mysteriously died. They said it was basically, I think they, they called it suffocation. Well, I don't know how you suffocate in, or lack of oxygen or whatever. It was a mysterious death that they still have not investigated. But they, he, they were the Dakota County star, his star witness, and they did not want Dale, they were very clear that they did not want Dale to testify what the children had told him directly and all the information that he had about David Ruckey, about Judge Knutson and Dakota County, and Dale had a lot. And they didn't want him to be put on the stand because they knew that he would be telling about all the abuse and about all the corruption in the county. That is why Dale's death is so extremely important in this case. If it's starting to make sense now of what's going on, you're seeing that Maybe in the beginning, Knutson got a nice payoff, I believe, to end this, but now as things were opening up and more evidence and documents and the kids' pleadings and all this was coming out, now Knutson had probably realized he's protecting a monster, and what do I do now? I'm going to have to work harder to cover things up. And that's why it's getting escalating over and over, because the case wouldn't continue to go on, and they get worse and worse. And that's what I believe is going on, as that Knutson... Judge Knutson had no idea that the level of, of abuse and the, and the evidence that we had was so strong. Approximately eight months later, Judge Knutson decided that he was going to have a child custody his, uh, hearing, even with these children missing. Uh, we were told it was going to be a two-day custody hearing, and we went in the first day, and things were going okay. Um, it's very important to know that prior to that um, first day of the hearing, Judge Knutson issued a motion to limine at 10 p.m. at night, the night prior, stating that there would be no evidence, no police report, no CPS reports, be, nothing would be brought in in, protect, in development for the child custody. So basically, Michelle could bring no evidence, no documents, no witnesses, nothing. 
David could bring anything he wanted in, but I was to bring no evidence of any kind. Michelle informed uh, David Knutson, the judge, that we had filed a $355 million civil lawsuit for violating seven of my eight constitutional rights, violating federal and state laws. He said, I don't care, this proceeding will go on. She asked him to recuse himself due to the fact he stated no. We went in the, uh, to the courthouse the next morning at 8 a.m. Michelle started um, asking questions and questioning documents and proving that documents had been uh, forfeited, um, forged and transcripts were misleading and she was proving she was doing very well. Approximately 40 minutes into the case, um, Three, oh, Judge Knutson said he wanted to take a break for Michelle to find a calendar. Now, we've only been in the second day, which he said was going to be canceled. Now we're going in um, 40 minutes later saying that it's going to be dismissed or we're going to take a break. Uh, three officers approached us. One, um, one officer, as we stood up and the judge walked away, pushed me into my chair. The other two grabbed my attorney and said, you are under arrest and um, hauled her away through the back door. Um, like I was trying to explain, Judge had already told everybody, do not show up, there will not be a second hearing. So I only had two, three spectators that had been there um, that we were able to get a hold of to come back the next day. They witnessed this entire thing. They told us we were to stand in the hall as they led my attorney away. Um, while we were in the hall, we were approached by a deputy sheriff at Dakota County, and we were told that the trial was over, that my attorney had been arrested, booked, charged, and that I was to leave the courthouse immediately. A judge has, can do anything they want. It doesn't matter about constitutional rights. We have given the judges this much power. It started out slowly them covering up. So the matters was, it, they started slowly covering things up. In the beginning, the police were actually trying to help, but they said every time that we go against David Ruckey, he finds a judge to dismiss our charges. So we're getting tired. It's basically if you can't you know, beat them, join them. So that's how it honestly seems like the police were like, okay, we can't go up against this man, so we're not going to keep arresting him for things that he's doing. It's because this judge, who was a former senator in the state of Minnesota, who then became a judge, who had done such a crazy uh, case with issuing all these orders and the things he had done, they had no other choice but to start protecting him. They couldn't control David, but what they could do is start covering up. The two main pieces of this goes down to the judge, which is David Knutson and David Ruckey. I think it got to the point where David Knutson had gone so crazy and he was, could not be able to control David Ruckey that slowly people all were getting involved with their cover-up. She's been to the Supreme Court six times. And they don't deny that Judge Knutson violated uh, constitutional rights and broke federal and state laws. They said, we're not saying that he didn't do it, but we're saying it's family court, therefore he can. That's the only realm where law does not apply, it's whatever he chooses. He has complete jurisdiction over that. And what we're trying to say is, there's got to be an end to this where judges are completely annihilating, not only annihilating a parent, but annihilating families in general. Across, over the history, when all this started taking place, the amount of people that have been involved in this case have stated, we have never seen a case to this level where you are completely stripped of everything. I mean, I literally can never work again. I can't do anything. They have completely humiliated me, destroyed me. I mean, in every level, every shape. There is no way to survive, and that is the goal, is they make it so you can't survive. I mean, you think that there's justice. In this situation, there's not, and that is why it's so important to people to look into this case, because this is not a divorce case. This is not a family court case. This is a criminal case. These are crimes that have been committed against children and myself and it gets a lot of people that have tried to help me. This is not a divorce and a family. This has nothing to do with this. They have taken this to a criminal level. We all believe in the American dream and U.S. justice and you know our constitutional rights and all those things, but they're not being adhered to. I mean, I was one of like the people listening thinking, are you kidding me? A judge can't do this. There's laws, you know, we have our rights. No, we don't. And, and that's what I think was the biggest shocker to me is that I would have never believed that a judge could nor would they do what has been done in this case. And that's been the toughest part to get across to people, is they're like, this can't happen. Oh, some, you must have done something. Oh, there must be something. And I'm here to tell you, I've done nothing. My children have done nothing. All we did was try to survive and try to get away from a monster, a man that if had we stayed any longer, we would not have survived. We would be dead today.
Since Sandra refused to just go away and not fight for her children's safety, David Ruckey and the alleged corrupt judge tried even harder to silence her with the use of lethal force and intimidation tactics that clearly are against the laws that we live by and try to obey as American citizens. These two bad apples are trying so hard to cover up the truth that laws do not seem to apply to them. How is this possible? They issued a seal warrant um, against me for human trafficking, kidnapping, and gun running. I was in bed and I woke up to screams of, are you Sandra Grazzini Rucky? Are you Sandra Grazzini Rucky? I thank God I did not move because I opened my eyes while laying in my bed at the, at the timeshare. And when I opened my eyes, there was three shotguns in my face and three men with um, helmets, glasses, full SWAT gear with these shotguns in my face. Um, I sat up, they let me sit up, and then they pulled me by the arm and they dragged me to the floor out of the bed. Um, I was not properly dressed. They made me stand in front of them for an extended period of time until my coworker had screamed at them from the other room, saying at least allow her to get dressed. The, there was a federal warrant listed for me. They said that I was a convicted assaulted felon. Um, I have never been convicted of anything. I do have a speeding ticket. <laughs> but I have never been arrested. Um, I have never had any problems with the law of any type, but this is what Dakota County had told the federal marshals, that I was a convicted assaulted felon. I was a gun runner, I was a kidnapper and a human trafficker. I said I was handcuffed and shackled in a dog cage because they said I was such a violent criminal um, and that's the way I was going to be transported. There was other men and women in the in the van that were not understanding what was going on. I was brought from Florida to Georgia to Alabama to Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, Oklahoma City, Kansas City, Michigan, Wisconsin, and when I was finally delivered to Minnesota approximately seven, eight days later, they said, oh, when they pulled me out of the cage, they said, um, oh, is that what you were told? There was a glitch in the system. Oh, that's, that's not wrong. She's none of those things. She's just wanted for parental deprivation. There's a difference between a bail and a bond. A bail means you can pay 10%. He issued that it had to be $1 million in cash or I was not to be released. Um, for this type of crime, which is uh, supposed, nobody's ever been convicted of it. Nobody's ever been really charged with it. Um, it's completely unprecedented. Um, I was given a sandwich, um, is how they'd bag lunches, specifically was to be given to me. Just prior to that, um, getting my dinner, I was given a new roommate. Um, this girl was in there for, she had 60 warrants against her. She was a lifelong criminal. Um, hers was assault and battery most of all. A few hours later, an hour later, I wasn't feeling good. The next thing I remember is trying to get uh, to the toilet and I woke up in a pile of blood um, on the ground. Um, I tried to get to the button on the door. I was, I was in a pile of blood completely out cold. All I know is that the, uh, they came in to get me. Um, what it ended up happening, I had a broken nose, a fractured skull, and a busted rotator cup. Um, is what the injuries that they determined after they had brought me to the hospital. When they had returned me back to the cell, um, after I was released from the hospital, my cellmate was gone and there was no question, no investigation. They did nothing into why this had happened to me. You can see by what I've been telling you now that there's clearly been a lot of crimes committed by my ex-husband and by all the people that have been involved in to try to silence me and to try to silence my children. I mean, we, we always seem to dismiss the time which the, which the police were aware of, which the judge has been aware of, that's been testified by my children the day that my ex-husband came into my kitchen after we were divorced and said, I have a gun in my pocket. I have a bullet for each one of you. He also then, approximately a week later, called one of my children and said, as I promised, and fired off six gunshots onto their voicemail. This was all evidence that Judge Karen Aspont would not even allow into my criminal case. This is, this is how out of control, where this judge has said, I will not allow any previous history of David Ruckey's in. There is an affirmative defense into parental deprivation, and that is to protecting children. That is what I did. And I sit here today with the parents that are out there. All you want to do is protect your children. This has mushroomed into a crazy. If this can happen to me, it can happen to you. And this is here where we need to nip in the butt. And there's this story. I asked on our kitchen table and said that he was going to shoot all of us. He had six gunshots. He was going to shoot all of us, my mom included. Another question is, why would a judge 
even in the family court, even into the criminal court, why would one woman who's never committed any crime be issued over 4,000 court orders and be ordered to follow them? Why would a judge completely strip you of everything for the rest of your life? Not only am I never allowed to contact my children, I'm not allowed to contact my children's children, my own family members, my relatives, my co-workers. Why would a judge go to this extreme if not to cover up for something he had done? When he had first done this, it was extreme enough. But then I think when he got farther and farther, he got out of control trying harder and harder to cover things up. Ordering destruction, they actually ordered the destruction of my entire family court case. They ordered destruction of videos. They've ordered destruction of audio recordings. Why would a court system do this in a criminal matter? You would think that you have a right to defend yourself, and yet these courts have gone out of their way to issue orders. Now, these are documents. These are proven. We have the evidence. Why would the judges continue issue orders, sealing evidence, not allowing things in? This is what I'm asking the people to see. A week before Christmas and, and, and not seeing my children. I have not seen my children uh, since 2012, September 7th of 2012. It, it's, I never expected to be sitting here in front of a camera. This isn't easy for me. This is not something I ever have expected to do. I have been abused by my ex-husband. I was abused by the courts. I've been abused by the media. I can't seem to get anybody to listen to my children or myself. The abuse has continued on, and that's why I'm saying the abuse of the cover-up has continued on, and it's time for it to end. And I'm asking that justice be served. It won't be served in every case, but this is a case that has gone so extreme. They've made it to try to confuse people, to cover the facts. We all hear about the mainstream media and how they're not telling you and what you really need to know. This is the stuff that they don't want you to know. They're going to continue to cover. But it's not easy to sit here. I, I'm a week before Christmas. I haven't seen my kids for years. I miss my children. I worry every day how they are. Um, I love my children dearly. I, I want them to know that. that I sit here every day, and I continue fighting. And I won't give up from my kids, because that's the reason I go every day, is for my children. I, nobody should have to live like this. You can do what you want to me, but not to my children. They, they've gone so far, as we've talked about, they've tried to murder me. They've tried um, to get me to, you know, off myself. They've tried everything they can to try to break me. Um, you will not break me. I'm done being silent. I will continue to fight. I will continue to speak out. I will continue to tell what's been going on. I will continue to document and prove over and over for the rest of my life if I have to. But we're going to end this. We are going to stop the destruction. Um, and we are going to get justice. And in the end, we will win. The truth is the truth. And that is what I stood by. The truth will prevail. And they should be concerned. Because the truth will get out there. And we are slowly getting it out there. And that is what they're afraid of most. We have the evidence. We have the proof. We have repeatedly given it to people. They just continue to make us suppress it. They won't get it out there, but we have it. And we'd be more than happy to give it to anybody who's willing to take on this case and take on one of the worst cases of criminal abuse, of constitutional rights, and everything else that they've done. This case has it all. It has every type that you could possibly want. There's nothing in here that can't be created into in a fight back. Talking about corruption, the corruption is corruption, but there's so much in this case and there's so much evidence to show it and to prove it. How can I get anybody, other than taking it out of the way to Trump and taking it on a national level, to show that 2020 lied, to show that the, nation, the state news has lied, to, to show and somehow get justice? I, how do I get somebody to go, wait a minute here, they've gone to a level that's that's showing that they've gone so crazy that they must have something to hide. Because in my belief is they went so far over the top that people should be sitting back going, okay, wait a minute. They went so far after her, so far over the top. We've showed them lying so many times. They must have something to hide. So there is something here that they're trying to cover up. I'm a nobody. I'm nobody. I have no money. I have nothing. I'm sleeping on people's couches. I mean... 
I own nothing. Why do you want me so bad? What is it? And that is what my one girlfriend, which I don't want to say her name, has said. You must know something. I said the, that they want to silence you this bad. The only thing I know is the truth. That's why they want to silence me. I don't know some massive secret that, you know, they don't want to. What I do know is all they've done to cover all this up. That is what they, they want me gone for. This is not just because I think they want. No, it is very evident. There's a, there's a pattern of what they have done to try to get rid of me. Either for me to try to do it myself is what they're expecting, or when I didn't do that, to try to put me in situations where it would happen. I mean, either, either to being with a, a, a woman who shot a man with a shotgun in his face to a transport that nobody would have survived, what they had done to me not only in transport with each jail, or the hunting that they're doing now. What are they trying to hide? They're trying to hide the truth and that I'm continually speaking out and telling people and slowly getting people with evidence and with proof and people that have been there are stepping forward going, yes, this is what happened and this is why they want to get rid of her. And we need to get it to somebody that's finally going to sit back and go, enough is enough. We're finally going to get justice. He, this monster will be taken care of. These kids will be protected. And the family, the mother, and the children will get their lives back finally. They're trying to cover their own crimes. It's, it's clearly evident. Because they, they continually, you know, that's what it is. They're trying to cover their own crimes. They're simply trying to cover their own crimes. I simply know the crimes that they committed. That's the knowledge I have, and that's the proof I have. And that's what they're trying to do, is get, silence me and get rid of me for that reason. See, they thought I'd go away. She's just a little housewife, flight attendant. Oh, oh my God, you strip her of everything, she'll just go off and die. And that's why I've been in court, and Judge Kuners go, what are you in front of me for? Why do you keep showing up? <laughs> well, that's strange. Yeah, yeah. Who throws somebody on the street? Oh, I just did what she wanted. Nobody fights for their children for all these years and does what I did to protect my children if I didn't. I mean, that doesn't even make sense. I mean, if you read behind the history, basically what I did was he sold our children to me. In the original divorce, I gave him everything. I just wanted my children, just for us to be left alone. And then the divorce, like I said, he claimed it was a fake divorce. He agreed to that, signed it. It was all done and over. A month later, after the money gets situated, then he came back and said, I want everything. And then that's what he did. Then they insisted on this judge that I did not agree to the second judgment decree, nor did he. Judge Knutson awarded everything, 100% of everything, including my trust fund and my clothing, everything, went to him. And that was signed by the judge. Sexual harassment so. to adults is okay in today's society, but rape, molestation, incest, and beating your own children and raping your own children is acceptable. Where have we gone wrong? Why is it that we get so crazy with sexual harassment with adults, but we can't protect our own American children? I mean, and, and that's what the most important part of this. This isn't about family court. This is not about divorce court. This is about protecting children, getting justice, what is happening, where we've lost sight of our own constitution and following state law, and what people today believe our system is made up of. We need to let them know it's not, whether it goes, like you said, to Megyn Kelly, Donald Trump, to the president, to who's willing to step out and say, we need to expose this. We can't protect everybody, but this case is so extreme, maybe we can stop it from ever getting to this level again. Stop and go back to our original USA, what we believe this country is. Let's not, let's not allow this to happen, and if it is attempted or it is done, we will stop it before it goes too far. Let's get oversight of our judges. That's what the president said he wanted to do. Well, here is your chance to get oversight. You want to stop the different corruption and all the things that are going on with all the funding and all that. Let's look into this. Let's take this case and show it where our system and our states and our USA has gone completely wrong. They didn't only come after me once. They came after me three times. And this is in an article by Michael Volpe. They did it the first time. The second time, I was standing, turning myself in for a violation of probation for not making a phone call. They had told them that I was a fugitive and I had left the state. I was standing in the police station, okay? So they issued a, a nationwide warrant on me. The third time they did it, they had taken me out of Ramsey in handcuffs. I was transported to the courtroom in front of Karen Aspa, 
okay, never left custody. I was transported back to the jail. During that time, Karen Asbog issued a third nationwide manhunt for me as a fugitive. So Michael Volpe went to the, to the federal marshals and they said, are you aware of this? That you were, went after her three times? I mean, the articles, it's documented everything in it. Well, she did this and this. Really? She, was, she never did any of those things. Well, they told us she did this and this on this time. She was in their custody sitting in their jail. Well, they told us she did this. Are you not, you've been snookered three times. When are you guys going to wake up and realize what's going on? It has recently been released that the judge has real estate business dealings with David Ruckey and lives in an $800,000 home on a golf course. Kind of ironic that David Ruckey, basically a low life at the time, marries a woman from a very wealthy family and in the end strips her of everything and now owns a multi-million dollar company. If the proper investigation is held, and it just follows the money, then this whole case becomes very clear and the corruption motivation will become evident. Samantha continues to remain in hiding for fear of her life and what may be done to her children. She only knows the truth and the crimes that have been committed against her and her children along with one of her daughter's friends. David Ruckey needs to be prosecuted for his crimes against children and held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. The judge needs to resign and if at all possible, he needs to be charged accordingly for any crimes that he has conspired to commit against this family.